lost, your solution isn't working, well, here are the tips I've learned over the years to help me get unstuck. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So if you're new here, I'm Polly. I'm a software developer, coder, whatever you wanna call it. It was hard for me to learn along the way, so I'm trying to give back the tips that I've learned throughout the year, so it makes it easier for you guys. Before we get started, I definitely wanna recognize that there are a thousand subscribers, and this is the first video that I make since I've hit 1,000. You have no clue how much that means to me. I've been wanting to start this YouTube channel for like the past three years, but I never did because I didn't think it was going to be helpful. But it turns out that I'm wrong because everybody, I've gotten so much feedback that you guys are liking how real I am and what I'm sharing and that's exactly what I wanted to do. So thank you and this is just the beginning. With that being said, we're going to go into today's topic which is being lost. Just like that because it's we've all been there and it ain't the first time and it's not gonna be the last time it happens so make sure to hit that subscribe button and like this video if you feel the same and you've been lost before now let's get to it so what does it mean to actually be lost before i give you tips i actually want to explain what the feeling is like so you don't feel alone because you are not alone this happens to all of us and what i mean by being lost and being stuck and not knowing where to go it means when you're trying to write your code or you're trying to write your solution or finish your ticket or turn in your work and it's not working it's you're not getting to the end product and you need to turn this in that your team's relying on you you don't want to disappoint and you haven't been able to find a solution it's probably been hours or it's been a couple of days you've tried everything you can think of and it's still not working i put this little maze up because it feels a lot like that because you don't know which way to go you went left you went right you went up and down none of your solutions are working normally when this happens to me i get a lot of imposter syndrome that imposter syndrome that i've been working against starts to really kick in it feels like i don't know what i'm doing i'm not good at this i suck because I can't get it done. I feel super embarrassed that like my teammates are getting work done. I still haven't been able to turn it in. I feel like I'm letting down the team. That is all normal feelings. Not get stuck here. You have to move forward and figure out solutions. And it's important to remember that because of these moments where we're stuck, that's when you really grow because you eventually end up finding a solution and you're probably never gonna forget it because all these times where I've been super stuck, I don't forget it and so when I see it again I'm like not this time I got you so here we go the first tip tip number one for getting unstuck is googling better I know you're gonna tell me what do you mean google better I'm already googling really well don't tell me how to google better I know I know but bear with me here what I mean by Googling better is try to be as specific as possible. Don't try to like copy and paste what you're writing or the error code. Try to be extremely specific in the behavior that you're seeing. So if you're seeing that you're having an issue on a map function, which is a loop function or um, let's just stick with a map example because that's the first one that came to my mind right so you're having an issue with the map function it's not returning what you needed to return or there's a weird bug and you don't know where it's coming from instead of googling how to iterate through uh, an array with these values or map not working don't google that well google that if, but if you can't find an answer what I mean by Googling more specific is Google the map function. Yes, just Google that function. Here's why. Because when you start to Google specifics and you look deeper and isolate to one issue, you'll be able to understand how things work. I know I'm always saying you have to understand how things work, but I say it for a reason because it's true. So I would Google that map function and I would see the definitions in the docs, the documentation for it and see what the creators of this function have told me how it works so i'm going to read slowly and carefully what it does its return value um its behaviors look through the examples this would help me to really understand how i'm using this tool and 
is will then lead me to understand how I'm using it and maybe I'm expecting the wrong outcome or maybe I'm using it incorrectly or maybe it never returns something and I'm waiting for something to be returned, right? Because a lot of these little bugs that you miss and can't find are little issues like that that are hidden. That's what I mean by Google better. And it doesn't just stop at a map function or a string or a return type. Break it down to where your problem is and focus on that little by little and go research how it's working or how its creators say it works and then see how you're using it. This will then show you if you're using it correctly, if you're using it incorrectly, if you're missing something. And hey, guess what? If the if you are using it correctly, you know that's not the issue there. There's something else, so you move on to the next thing. If you Googled better, and you're like, okay, Paola, I Googled better. I ain't getting anywhere. Not to worry, I have tip number two. Tip number two, GitHub. Yes, you heard me, GitHub. I swear when someone told me about this, it was like they opened Pandora's box. I did not know that there was this world of answers on GitHub and help on GitHub. Think again, it is not only for repos. It has this feature where you can search and you can either search in your repos or you can search in all of GitHub. You heard me, all of GitHub. That means all the public repositories that are on GitHub. Do you know how much that is? That is a lot of content. And what you can do is you can search for a line of code or a, a line of code, a like function name, and you can see all the projects that are using it. Yep, you can see all the products that are using it, which means that you can go and see how other people used it and see if you can find a better solution. See if they used it differently. Not always work, okay? This cannot be like, don't think this, oh, like this is, this is the answers of the answers. It's not. That is one part of GitHub that helps is that search. Then there's another hidden part of GitHub. On GitHub, since it's a repo, like you host your repositories, there are a lot of public repositories that we use as libraries that have their open source code there, right? So, and basically what that means is that they have their code there with documentation on how to use it in your code and you just go look at it and you see it, right? So here's where the beauty lies. If we were to go to GitHub and search Ant D right now, right? I have a, I have an, I have a bug where I'm trying to find something for Ant D. So, Andy is a public repository on GitHub. So what I'm gonna go do is I go look at the issues tab. There is a issues tab where people open up issues, people like you and me, doesn't matter how, how long you've been in the industry or if you've been here a day, if you've been here two days, there's no discrimination. You wanna open up an issue, go ahead and open up an issue. Don't be shy. I remember being so shy to open one up. Don't be shy. You open up an issue, which is basically asking the creators of this library hey i'm having this issue can someone help me and somebody nine out of ten times somebody will help you if it's the creators of the project if it's somebody random if it's somebody who's had the same issue and you can track it and, and people will give you back feedback and a lot of the times and this isn't just with this library this is with any code that has that you're using from a public repository right like wherever you're having an issue look up the library that it's using or what's it's called and search for it on github and see if you can open up an issue and what you're going to do is you're going to open up that issue you're going to write whatever problem you're having and you're going to sound responsible when you report back and say hey i'm staying on top of it and you can go work on something else in the meantime while you get that issue resolved there's been so many times where i've opened up an issue and i've gotten an answer and it worked and it felt incredible and i remember being so shy to open up issues don't do it don't be shy do it you won't regret it and it's gonna be super fun when you first do it you're gonna want to open up issues all the time so those are the two great tools that github provides you tip number three this has to be my favorite, but I can't use it all the time because I can't just always resort to this one. It's asking your teammate. Yes, asking your teammate. 
I love asking my teammate. Honestly, I wish I could do it all the time instead of having to Google better or having to um, search through GitHub or do other stuff. I wish I could just always go first and ask a teammate, but that is not the responsible engineering thing to do. First, you have to try to get yourself out of the hole first. Try to find solutions first. If you can't, that's when you go to a teammate. I cannot say this enough. Do not be afraid to ask your teammate. You will not sound stupid. You will not sound like you don't know anything. You shouldn't be embarrassed. You know why? Because we have all been there. So do not be afraid to ask your teammate. And when you do ask your teammate, well, most people are very helpful. It's gonna be a great experience. And here's why. Being a teammate has a bunch of benefits. And I'm gonna try to name them all. So. When you ask a teammate, you start to create a, a better relationship with that person because you're asking them for help. Not only do you start to create a better relationship with them, but they're able to give you their perspective, their advice, their thoughts on perhaps why it's not working. And this is so valuable because you sometimes as an engineer don't think of solutions or don't think of that logical path and they bring a new perspective and so you get to see it in another light and moving forward in other codes you may start to think about how they thought about it or use their tools of or their thought process and apply it most of the time they're more senior right or they've been there here for longer they've seen more problems seniors on seniors still ask each other for advice because it's good to get the different person's input on your solution and this is important i know this is a, a video on when you're stuck but this is something that i learned and i one of my favorite t tips is that ask your teammate before starting your solution right so you have your solution you're about to write it out and code it if you have a good relationship with your teammate go ahead and ask them and present them to your solution and see what thoughts they have because sometimes they'll be like oh that's a good idea but you're missing this or that's great that's awesome go for it i suggest using this library or i suggest using that to make it more efficient so this is this is why it's my favorite and, and then not only do like you build a great relationship with that person and hey guess what if you can't figure it out and they can't figure it out, you two can now try to attack it together or fix a problem together. And then if you don't figure it out, you both of you can go and raise it to your manager, to your boss, and it seems it will be more credible, right? It's not just, oh, I can't do it, or I'm afraid, and you're afraid to like look bad and lose your job. You won't, okay? And if you do, then that's not a job for you because that's not how, you don't want to develop in a, in a world where like you, you get a bug and you're fired, okay? Because that's, we, we're all there. Tip number four is taking a break. Yes, I know. I know this isn't what you're expecting to hear, but honestly, it's what we all need to hear because we can all relate that we've been so deep into the code that we don't want to take a break that we're like no no i don't need the break i'm good i'm really concentrated right now or i need to solve this i can't take a break we've all been there but i've had to learn the hard way that i have to do it because when you take a break and a real break right not like oh i'm gonna go for two minutes and go stir myself some coffee small breaks you're still thinking about the problem you want to take a break where you're not thinking about the problem right for a good hour or two or as long as you reasonably can right why because taking a break allows you to gain some perspective because what tends to happen is that we're so lost in the code and we're so into it like kind of like the matrix where like it's one of those things that like you're like locked in we lose focus as to the bigger picture and sometimes that's what we need is a bigger picture to understand why it's not working there's been a lot of times where it's like five o'clock and i've been working on this for the past two or three hours and it's not working and i'm not i don't want to end my day with not figuring it out i've done this so many times and i've gone to a point where i've drained myself where i'm exhausted and i can't think anymore and i'm like okay i have to throw in the towel i'll do this tomorrow and guess what when i wake up the next morning i'm like oh my god i'm so stupid it was right in front of me how did i not see this and it's because we lost perspective so this is the importance of taking a break okay it's important don't don't forget to listen to your mind and give yourself some time to think before going back and it doesn't mean that you're weak because you have to take a break at all it makes you stronger trust me last tip tip number five tip number five is 
my most desperate tip, which is take to the community. What do you mean by take to the community? So as computer science developers, coders, we are very fortunate to have a very nice open community where everybody, for the most part, is here to help. Um, we'll try to solve issues that you have, even if they're strangers. And there's this beautiful world of Twitter and computer science and coding. This is literally my most desperate when I cannot find an answer and I feel like super lost. I take to Twitter. <laughs> okay, I'm mean, gonna sound so stupid, but why? Because there are a lot of people who are on Twitter who are the developers of Ruby on Rails or on Redux or have maintained our node maintainers or Python maintainers and they're on Twitter and they're active which means if you're really that lost and you cannot find and you need an answer from an expert if you do at whatever expert I can't solve this blah 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 and you put like what your issue is and hey if that expert doesn't reply there are other people who follow that expert who see your tweet and will reply Twitter loves to engage with like coding questions, coding opinions, coding trends. So this is what I like to do. Again, it's my most desperate because I'm like, I cannot find anything, I've tried everything, and it's not working. Does it work all the time? No. Do you get an answer all the time? No. But hey, it's what I've tried to figure out and help me. So those are my five tips. If you still find yourself not being able to find a solution after using these tips or using your own tips, do not worry. You shouldn't lose your job over this. Don't stress it. It's not a big deal. We've all been there. If you still haven't been able to find a solution, take it up to your manager. Take it up to your manager and tell them, look, I'm facing this issue and I tried to solve it by doing X, Y, Z, A, B, C, right? Show that you put in the effort because you have. Don't show them like, oh, it didn't work, right? They're going to appreciate that you put in the effort. And they're gonna appreciate that you're bringing this up ahead of time, right? Or you're bringing this up as soon, like, as soon as you realize that you hit a roadblock. This way that everybody's aware, everybody knows. And if it happens to be that the issue that you're fixing is critical and it needs to be done now, they'll probably pass it on to somebody else to fix it, right? It, it has happened to all of us. You won't, you shouldn't lose your job because you couldn't solve the bug right now at, when we needed it 20 minutes ago or we gave it to you two days ago and you haven't solved it okay it's it's very normal and part of the process that's how we grow and that's how we become stronger coders and that's all i got if you guys have any tips that you've learned along the way comment down below if you also have any questions again don't be afraid and comment down below and thank you thank you thank you for all your support and all my subscribers and Keep subscribing, keep liking, let me know what you want to hear next, what you guys are interested in because I will definitely make a video on whatever you guys are super curious about. Next week, I hope to put up a video on interviews. I'm currently interviewing and I'm taking you guys along that process. Um, so expect that video next week, uh, whatever the outcome is. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. When you feel alone, when you feel alone, <laughs> what is this? Tip number two. Oh, I already said that. Yeah, so you guys uh, give like, I.